Good afternoon, everyone. Um, another FMQ's review section. Reception. Um, no Mr. Atchard this week. He's away to London to visit his mammy. Alex Grant here. Stuart Lockhead and myself, known as Stuart. Quite interesting this week, Alex. How do you think Joe did? Um, well, I think corporation tax, like the NHS, as we've discussed before, is a, is a, a relatively soft target. It's, hip, it's a hypocritical target, just like the NHS is. But as far as I'm concerned, the parties in opposition, particularly the Labour Party in this instance, ain't worried about the hypocrisy of what they're saying. Um, the general thesis about race to the bottom is is an easy easy target, particularly when the attraction of the Amazons and the like has this problem associated with it, not paying enough tax, and all you're doing is creating, in many instances, fairly low paid, pretty questionable jobs. Um, and I think I think because because of a lack of, as we collectively have discussed, ad nauseum. Um, vision in a number of respects. Uh, too, there is too much emphasis on if we get independence, we're going to succeed by lowering corporation tax. Uh, it's a, that's a, an oversimplification, but it's too much of that. Anyway, Alex's response to it, without any doubt, was you're being hypocritical. You, Gordon Brown just did the same. And by the way, we're not talking about dropping taxes and then not collecting them. We're, drop, we're talking about having a, a competitive rate of tax. and collecting the tax. So do you think that, that, I don't think that resonated very well. I mean, it should, but... <clears throat> it's a hard argument. I, I've always thought that the way around this is simply to, to bring in a, a sales tax. You sell something in Scotland, you're taxed. Yeah. I mean, it's what they do in the States, in America. It's complicated. It'll be too complicated. And maybe that's the, the stick you beat them with, right? Corporation tax, or we'll introduce a sales tax. Yeah. Well, I'd well, VAT is a kind of sales tax, if you think about it. Yeah, well, that's a sales tax on the consumer, though. It, I, you know, I yeah, look, it, the, 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 there's always a balance between indirect and direct taxes, and generally speaking, those of us of a social democratic persuasion would rather go for direct taxes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Indirect taxation, like the, if it, 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 it hits actually hit the poor hardest. Yeah. It's indiscriminate. I mean, yeah. if you're a poor person living on, in any remote community in Scotland, you still have to run a car and you still have to pay almost the same amount of your petrol every weekend. So you're paying a huge part portion of your yeah. income just in tax, just to get to work and back. Yeah, yeah but the, you're right. And it, it, as I say, it's an, I believe it's an easy target. The truth is you need, you need to create a wider vision of which this is only a component part. And then you can say, look, we're not doing any different to what Gordon Brown did, except we'll do it better. So put that out of the way. What independence will give us is the following things. Um, and I don't think there's enough of the latter and too much of the focus on we're having the same currency and well, look, we're going to drop but, it. But do you not agree that to some extent, John Lamont's attack today, I think they, rehe I think they really did, the Labour Party really did rehe uh, rehearse it properly. I think they researched it properly. Yep. They almost certainly had some kind of field focus group to... Back, you know, just how does it come across? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I thought it was actually very professional, and, and I don't think Alex. Just for a change, Alex wasn't a lead above her. Well, I, I don't agree. I, I I think I don't think he was a lead above her, but I do think he won it because I think the way he did it, the, the two things he emphasised was the twenty thousand jobs, and we've done twenty seven thousand. Sorry, twenty seven thousand. We've done our job. We've looked at this and we intend to collect the tax. And that's what he hammered. So, yes. I think he got... Yes. I mean, Joanne had a nice hit in our last or third question, but I still reckon Alex came out of it. Considering nobody hasn't cut corporation tax. Labour's done it, the Conservatives have done it, and they intend to do it some more, you know. So I, I, I don't think he... He didn't walk away without a bruise, but I think he won the. I think he won the fight. Well, I, I, would, I think it was a score draw because she was able to say, Nori, that nobody supported it other than this tax exile. Now he said this tax exile is creating lots of jobs, but it's a good hit. This the, because McCall's come out that's very supportive of the Yes campaign, with independence, blah blah. blah. Um, they're hitting very hard the fact that he is personally a tax exile, which doesn't help. Um, 
and she said she read out a whole bunch of people who said they were they were anti reducing the tax and it was a race to the bottom. So I have to say I don't think he and lost it, but I don't think he won. won it. And the one person that was missing off that list was Ed Balls. Mm -hmm. She wasn't prepared to say it's not Labour Party policy. Well, I know that, but he, if that's yeah. the case, he should have hammered that harder than well, that. It's kind of, I, th I think he missed a trick. Rick, Rick John also got hit with, uh, there's been a West Coast Motors douche with uh, Michael Russell, the uh, Education Secretary. Education Secretary? Yes. Oh, I was trying to think why he was up Filling in. <coughs> he was filling in. <coughs> This new ferry route, of course, that's it, it runs from his yeah, constituency. I wasn't a hit, I didn't even know what he was talking about. You needed to be. You needed to be. In, 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 to be in what as, I, as I said when she said it to uh, Stuart, she had that on her script to say whatever answer he gave. Well, uh, oh, it's been, it, it wasn't, it wasn't it's in the, the Scot Scot It's in the Scotsman and the Herald today, okay. and because she brought it up, it will be in the Scotsman and the Herald. Yeah, so it's, 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 you know, it's a shitty service, but, but we, we know how where that, we now know from that courtesy of Nori earlier on, off camera, just how that came about. No doubt you'll tell us the whole story. But it um, certainly, you know, the slightest thing, and it's blown out, up, out of all proportion, Especially by the Scotsman, and then the BBC follows the Scotsman, and yeah. then half the week the, the, the Herald will be following almost the same line as the Scotsman because that Magnus Gardner seems to be in, in charge of what, yeah, what, what comes up. Political. On the other hand, I was talking about the, the Herald, I'm beginning to discern a definite tension between what Robbie Dinwiddie, who is based here, mm -hmm. you can see him walking around here, as the senior political correspondent writes, and Magnus Gardner, his Immediate superior. It, it is interesting that there is pro indie is too strong, but there is definitely a more liberal take on the indie oh. arguments. So we say it might be balanced yeah. because you've got both sides yeah. of the yeah. argument being yeah. presented, which you don't get anywhere else. So it's yeah. you know, but S STV and the Herald, I think, are, are actually de delivering some sort of balance. Yeah. That's yeah. how I would describe it. But the rest of them. The BBC are way, way behind oh, yeah. the curve. But, what? The, but the, they tell the public. I mean, head of news, what's Boothman? <laughs> yes, ex, now, ex Labour apparatchik. Yes, ex Labour. Not only that, he was around, also, he was President. around apparently as a, a, a Labour student leader, yep. at the same time as Margaret Curran was, mm -hmm. who now denies that she was a Labour leader at the time of Dennis Healy. <laughs> That, I mean, that whole thing was hilarious. My son's going to become a foreigner if he goes to university in England after independence. I mean, I have no idea how her head works. Well, being a foreigner is a bad thing, is it? Well, it, I mean... All I, my grandchildren when, when, are foreigners. When does your family become a foreigner? Exactly. Not, before they're your family. All my, all my grandchildren yeah, apparently are foreigners because they're English-born. And they're just and as close to me as if they lived here. This not denial, this denial of knowledge about... <coughs> Excuse me. Healy's comments about them um, underplaying the value of oil in Lying. the state. The Labour government of the time totally lied to the public before you know, the 1979 referendum about the value of Scottish oil. I knew nothing about it. No, I'm quite prepared to believe that she wasn't high enough up the food chain to know nothing about it. Ah, but to it. deny she knows anything about it now. Exactly. When she... Where's she been? Oh, she oh, never read the... She said she wasn't around. around. Not around. Absolutely, is nonsense. But you know, mm -hmm. and she got interrogated reasonably well by Bateman. But yeah, because Bateman's half, he's Bateman and Isabel Fraser are the only, and they've been relegated to uh, just a weekend slot. It's a weekend slot, I and but I think you know Bateman could have given her a much harder time because you know it was farcical, and Tom Devine was very sort of voce in his mild put down. Well, Sorry, what are you talking about? Yeah. Can you tell the viewers? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, the, the, when Ma when Margaret Curran was interviewed on Saturday morning by the BBC Good Morning Scotland yes. by Derek Bateman, yeah. and he gave her a reasonably hard time, and then he introduced um, uh, Tom Devine, who, um, as far as I'm aware, basically says his DNA is 100 percent Irish. Um, I, I don't. I don't think I've ever had him deny he's born in Scotland. But anyway, he he, he has a very strong Irish Catholic connection in his family, as does Margaret Curran. And he, he very politely, because he, he, in fact, I think he said something like, look, I don't want to take it either side in this argument. He studiously avoids being, avoids being yes or no. Um, but but he, he very mildly said to her, I don't actually think that's a 
a sensible thing to say. What, um, the, 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 the she, she wasn't No, no, the, 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 the independence would make people in England foreign. All right, I'm sorry, that, that's... Sorry, sorry I'm, I'm... Okay, you can I'm, move from one topic to the but other. She, yeah, I, mean, I mean, what she actually did was, she said her son would become a foreign. Yeah, well, son is, she's been saying that for months. But I mean, I, yeah, well, she just... Really? She, she had an opportunity because the preliminary census figures have just been brought out, which she had access to. I don't think they've been published. But anyway, she had access to the number of, of so people who define themselves as Scottish living in England, I think it was three quarters of a million. That gave her, that statistic just gave her another hook to hang this foreigner bit on that she's mentioned before. Okay, well, so the I BBC just, well, interviewed her accordingly. But can I just point out that this whole idea that the word that foreigner is a bad thing is a bit weird coming from the Labour Party? Yeah, yeah. I, well, thought, I thought the Labour Party welcomed foreigners. Well, apparently not. They're, they're, they're worried about their in the UK the debate. Well, it fits in with the Westminster Labour Party's position on immigration now, doesn't it? Oh my goodness, Frank Field interviewed this morning <laughs> about what they will do with it, because um, God, Osborne's in, in trouble again with some of his uh, welfare plans. I mean, struck down by either the EU Commission or the EU courts. And um, Frank Field, Labour spokesperson on pensions and uh, welfare, He's saying, well, they could, they could just ignore it. What did he? Well, I'm sorry, I've got, well, a, problem. I, I have got a problem with Frank Field. Oh, yeah, there'll be retrospective I mean, he legislation. Helped, he, he helped write that policy. I know he did. And, uh, I've seen it all before, the, the completely authoritarian Labour Party. How dare they call themselves Social Democrats? It's absolutely outrageous. Right, let's move on, gentlemen. Right. What about Ruth Davidson? She picked a very safe subject today. Interesting, she even got... It was very safe. It, it was a what Willie we used to say about Willie Rennie a few months back. It was a very sort of innocuous statement, like concerned about concerned of Glasgow. Um, uh, what are we doing about this dreadful baby ashes scandal, which seems to be spreading, and everybody's been doing it. But I thought, it, but it's uh, old. It's no, old. The well, ashes are cold. Well, they are. But you know, you then get into this debate about well, shouldn't the government be unearthing? The, the scoundrels. The truth, the truth is, I think Alex Salmond responded to it very well by saying, look, our focus here is stopping it happening. The fact that it's happened, spending too much money investigating that is neither here nor he there. He was, stop he, it happening. he was very open to her, whatever well, she would said, suggest. Uh, he didn't slap her down no, in any way at all. No, what, what's interesting about the actual facts of it are, you're given a sheet and you're asked what you want to do with the remains of your child. And there's a box that basically says, I give you permission to do what you want them. Really? Now, distressed parents, and this applies in Edinburgh, I don't know if it applies everywhere. You put your signature in that box, you essentially give up your rights. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm presuming that to make life simple for people at the crematorium, whatever, they encourage that box to be signed. Right. And people were really signing it without full knowledge of what it meant. Mm -hmm. So the system's there, it's been manipulated, right. I think. Okay, I don't know enough about it, so yeah. I can't comment. Um, but I, anyway, I think the I point, the point is, was, her question was a very reasonable question, and the response was a very reasonable one, so no, 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 way. Yeah. What about Willie? She, what, she, she did well by avoiding <laughs> killing Salmon to make back to beat her yeah, over the head. That's very true. What about, so well done, Ruth. Yes, well done. Ruth. What about Willie? What did he talk about? Uh, it's the Justice Court. Oh, well, that's a safe one. They're back. Let's, let's be. No, not, neither Alex nor um, right. Willie Rennie actually mentioned what what, what it's about. It's well, it's, a, it's about centralisation. It's, it's well, about, it's, it's not about. Local I mean, the part of the world we know quite well in the borders, right? There's a court in Selkirk. Jed, but, uh, there's a court in Jed. There's a court in Peebles. And there's a court in Peebles. And, and what? All in Gala now. Well, which actually makes you, a lot of sense. Well, you can get there. Yeah. If you go to go court in Peebles from anywhere south or east of Peebles, you've got to change buses at Gala. Yeah. You've got to go to Selkirk, you've got to change buses at no, Gala. Right. The, sensible yeah. place, <laughs> the sensible place so to put it of courts in the borders of Gala. But what <clears> nobody <throat> said was there is a review, an ongoing review. They're in the middle of I looking think, at it. I think he made mileage on it. I think he did make mileage. Willie actually made mileage because, as I say, the broader aspect is, I mean, I'm uncomfortable about um, the, te the tendency of this SNP government to centralise fire services, police services, 
court services, what will be next? It's, it's another trend that I want to see continue. And therefore, he's, I think he hits a wee button. Well, when he well, I'm, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and, I mean, Selkirk Sheriff Court exists because 500 years ago, they needed to hang reavers. Essentially, I mean, we're talking, and he missed well, a chance there because no, Willie kept going on about 500 years worth of history. He should have got right in there and said, Well, do you want a modern court service or do you want a medieval court service? Well, there's usually, even they'll be perhaps picked on a better topic than, than he normally does. There were no well, problems involved. I he didn't that, actually come, to that, come back with his second question very well. No, but I think the point he was trying to make, Stuart, was whether it was done particularly well, it's questionable, but I got it. He was actually saying, you're having a review, but you've already made your mind up. You've got to close these things, and you actually haven't told us what you're going to put in their place. Salmond, I think, could quite easily have said, well, we're centralising it because it makes sense, medieval uh, reductions in budgets, all the rest of it, availability of transports, and no one will be disadvantaged. And we are going to do that. And there's a review ongoing about exactly how we're going to do that. And nothing's going to get closed until we know what we're going to put in this place. Because if you don't say that, then yeah. he was yeah. proposing you're both, you're both it was missing, going to get closed. You're, you're both missing what he was trying to, what he was trying to say. He was trying to um, show that uh, SNP back ventures were, in, were having difficulty fighting for, uh, their, for their constituents. Yeah, essentially, you're right. You're right. Um, you're right. What's her name, Scott? She's Peebles. I forget, but the point is that um, Alex really did slap him down on that one about, <laughs> what was it, there was a couple of quotes, one was Lib Dems always, well he's a Lib Dem isn't he, so they always have two, they can, they can hold two positions under any circumstances. Um, oh no, that was the time we got to the aviation yeah, they, tax they, thing. But they, the football team on the subs bench. But that was the other one, because yes, uh, you, you guys used to have a football team, now you, all you got is a subs, subs bench. bench. Um, Which is the point I tried to make at that thing in Parliament, but yes, good, good, good point. So that, that was the point that, that actually, you know, that would Salmon really put him down there because he, he, he allowed him in with that one. But it, but it is your point is correct though. There is a general concern about you know devolution and independence would appear to be the, the way to attack devolution and independence. One of the principal ways to attack it is. It's all central belt. It's all Edinburgh, and you're actually you're you're pulling back re local devolution in a whole load of respects, including in this instance how the courts work, mm -hmm. the police, the fire service, all the rest of it. So you're actually centralising things, and it's Westminster for Holyrood. That's the that's the attack, and you there's mileage you know, in it. There is mileage in it. There's no question. There is. It's much. That question had much more mileage than rabbit and on and on and on about the but, indefensible two-year-old But he, he opened the question with some gibbering about... I mean, his opening line was SNP MSPs are having some problems on the just, Justice Committee defending because the they're defending their local constituencies. Yeah, yeah because, so, because what he's purporting is that, like local hospitals, and the debate, the, there was a debate yesterday in... Uh, uh, in uh, around slightly wider subjects than taking us to England, but this, this they've just published some unsurprising new results that says if you're unfortunate enough to get in a hospital on a Saturday, you've got 25 percent or whatever it was higher likelihood of snuffing it. Yes. And I had a, a medical. You obviously professional, stay up to Monday. Right, and exactly. Just die before you get there. So I had I had a medical professional saying, yeah, and one of the problems is if you actually go into a bigger facility where they have the ability to have good coverage seven days a week that's great but, but everybody resists the closure of their local hospital yeah. now you can back to this whether it's the police the fire service the courts reduction in budgets you know how do you how do you square how do you balance this situation between lack of money or or investing the resource in a, in a single place to provide a much better continuous service with the demand for localism and Leslie Riddock, as we know, and, and uh, Andy Whiteman go on ad nauseum about Scotland having the lowest local representation per capita in Europe. I've, I've, I've been to some of the seminars, Nordic Horizons and things, and I have to agree, it's, it's, it's a point that strikes home with me. It I does with me. I, I don't like this over centralisation. Uh, it, it, having been a Highlander, you know, a large part of my life, I understand what it's like to live north yeah. of the central belt. and. I mean, up in the up in the Highlands, Assassinac is not an Englishman. Assassinac is a loner. Ooh. Yeah, it's true. That's the way. I'm sorry. That's the way they're regarded. Uh, can I can I take the time just to cover something because we've got a bit of an expert here, and Alex. Oh yeah. 
Um, the airport tax and the arguments about it affecting the uh, regional flights to so London. That, that was actually three and, questions. That was the next biggest thing on the entire FMQs. Yeah. Yeah, but you you seem to think that it's a bit of a bogus one. Well, it, no, it, it, APD the tax the tax that Gordon Brown introduced, um, there is no doubt could be used. It is one thing, unlike the a much more contentious debate about a corporation tax being a race to the bottom. APD wouldn't be redu reducing APD to attract more people into Scottish airports by affecting the fares for direct flights into Scotland. Um, could have a significant effect. However, the issue about the, the issue that has just generated this debate is uh, FlyB, who happen to own some Gatwick slots and are in, like lots of airlines, uh, having a tough time. So they've decided to sell the Gatwick slots. Now, there's two reasons for that. A, they want the cash, and B, the UK government regulator allows the owners of Heathrow and Gatwick to price. Um, landing at Heathrow and Gatwick to basically suit suit them economically and what that does is it says we want to incentivize because both of those airports are constrained from a slot point of view a capacity point of view it doesn't make sense if they're going to maximize their income to to incentivize small aircraft to fly in there and if you want to fly from a regional airport into Gatwick by definition the demand isn't the same as Atlanta to Gatwick or whatever. Yeah. So if, if you had a government that had a policy that favoured the regions to try and counterbalance the gravitational pull of London, you would actually say we won't allow the airline, the airports, to price um, their, their landing prices the way they do, which is to disincentivize small aircraft flying in. And one of the problems of being in the UK is that London has become, not just financially, but economically, a huge gravitational pull to suit London itself. And that means they don't give a monkey's fandango about people in Inverness who want to try and get to... to Anywhere uh, in the to, world. To get, well, that's a secondary issue. First off, if you're in Inverness, you, if you want to get to London, to do um, then you've got a decreasing likelihood... It, with, with Gatwick going, as far as I'm aware, there aren't any Inverness uh, Heathrow flights anymore. Could be a lie that comes down somewhere if we used to do it, and we couldn't make it work. So basically, if you're in Inverness, you're going to have to you're going to have to fly. I don't know what options they've got now in Inverness. You might have to fly to Amsterdam to go somewhere. But if you want to get to London to do business, mm. you're going to end up in a in a very difficult situation now. But look, at, can I just sum up what you seem to be saying? The, the fact is that it is in a useful economic lever. And the fact that it's not the tax has not been devolved to Scotland, let yeah. alone anything to do with independence. Yeah. The, the argument, actually, the logical argument of what you were saying is that the only logical argument is to say yes at next year's referendum, and then we can control our own. Yeah, it's like everything else. Which uh, there is a general problem in the UK, and we're all about regional policy. But, well, exactly. If we were an independent Scotland, the Scottish government could encourage um, Scot uh, Scottish business. Travellers coming to and from Scotland, but even when it comes to long distance, to stop using London as a hub, but go to Frankfurt or Amsterdam. Can I? Well, can I just a competitive I, situation? Can I ask Alex another question? How many airports in Scotland can take the biggest planes flying? Mm, good question. Um, I mean, I know my brother can fly in from <coughs> into Glasgow from Australia. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Glasgow and Edinburgh can take. The biggest aircraft, um, uh, Inverness, I suspect can't, but I'm not sure. They don't really come up. So, I, I, um, so the, the wouldn't. What I'm really asking is, in an independent Scotland, we could create a hub. There'd be any point. Well, well, well I mean, I know, know I'm not, not, not really. I'm not no, I'm talking well, about the infrastructure no, as opposed to the real necessity. No, I think, that in my opinion, and it's only my opinion, but I've, I, you could. There are things we can do to mitigate the fact that bigger airports in England, particularly London and Manchester, with, the, with, the, with much bigger conurbations, have had all the investment. And therefore, once you've got that, and you've got that critical mass, it's very hard for even Glasgow and Edinburgh to attract direct flights from places. The only, the only places that you'll get direct flights from is if there is, a, is enough 
traffic to justify it. And there are some, like in the Middle East now, you can fly to Edinburgh and, and Glasgow because they're keen to drag traffic through the Middle East to go to other points. Mm. Um, but with the demise of BMI and the slots being sold to British Airways and now those Gatwick slots that fly BM being sold uh, um, to EasyJet, the fact is the, the direct access to London from Scotland is seriously affected. Mm. Um, and there's nothing you can do about it because there's nobody fighting. You would, you would have required a regulator to protect those services as important to the UK. It's one of the examples, in my opinion, of where actually the UK doesn't do us any favours. Oh, well, you they, They've just let the devil take the highways. Can I give a vote for the presenting officer? Because yeah. I thought he did... Uh, I thought, he did. Uh, although, we, although we noticed him, we, did. we needed to notice him. And he was very stern headmasterish. And, yeah, they, and that's what they were getting very excited on the back benches, yeah. and he was in there like straight away. Yeah. What kind Would of you just want to run through them all then, Stuart? Sure. What well, boats? Well, presenting officer. Whoa! I mean, I've got to give him a positive. I'll give him a six. He's better than average. Uh, I would give. Um, let's start with the bottom. Willie Rennie. <laughs> what did he do? Well, he was. He, he touched the nerve with me because I do find this localism. Centralisation dilemma bothers me. Um, on the other hand, I think he failed. To, he failed to deliver with his second question. It was too good. Old, so I'll give him two. Ruth, I thought Ruth was uh, at her best today. Um, the issue is a local constituency issue in quite a few places around the country. Anybody who knows anybody who's lost a, a child and cremation of ch children's bodies, a baby's bodies, it's, it's a hot button issue and he, she was diplomatic she got a diplomatic answer so I'll give her five. Oh, gee that's... she came that you know average Joanne and then again you see that, that, I think Joanne was the best prepared she's ever been both research wise and I think they must have tried it out in, in front of a focus group to see what possible answers Alex would come up with and then have their follow up questions based on that so I think for the change I think of the corporation tax issue Hit a lot of buttons for me, I'm giving her seven. Um, Alex, I thought, I didn't think he was the usual league above. I've got to score him on a, on a, a play him same playing field as all the rest. He had good hits on the aviation tax, good hits against Willie Rennie. Didn't, wasn't asked to make a hit against Ruth, but he did the right thing and was diplomatic. Joanne, I don't think he came up very well, terribly well again, so I can only give him a seven. Alex? Um, yeah, I'll start with the, uh, the, the easier. Um, the presiding, presiding officer was noticeable and, and did interject at the right time as far as I'm concerned, so I'm, I give him five, um, which is fairly bland, but it, it was fairly bland. There was nothing exciting about it. Willie Rennie, um, uh, I give him five as well, because the question was quite good. I don't think he executed some of it particularly well, but the localism bits we've discussed, I think, is. He's better than where he's been before on two-year-olds. Um, Ruth Davidson, I give a six because uh, it was it was statesmanlike, bland, but nothing particularly exciting. But you know, I couldn't mark it down, so I give it six. John, I give a seven because I think the target's a good target. It's like the NHS; it's got a lot of resonance. And as Stuart said, I think she researched the question quite well and executed it quite well. Um, I, I, I think there was a score draw between the two of them, but I mean, inevitably, in, in the round and against everybody, I still think Alex Hammond is the best of the lot, but only one point better, so I've given him eight. Well, I'll start with Alex. I'm kind of with you. I'll go for an eight there, because he played it well. I think it was a score draw with Joanne, but he hammered everybody else. Mm. Joanne, I'm giving seven. Again, same reasons as you guys. I did notice her hands start to shake again when she's reading off a bit paper. Oh, mm -hmm. Willie, I think he failed because of the second question. So mm -hmm. I'm actually going to give him a two. Ruth, all she did that was smart today was she didn't ask a question that handed Sam and the baseball bat to be her. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. You know, so, okay, she's learned that lesson. But my God, her questions are going to be boring from now on, are they not? So I'll give her a three. Quick top up. 
Start at the bottom, Willie, a nine. <laughs> this is positive territory. Maybe if you got more questions, it'd be better. Ruth Davidson, 14. Joanne, 21. Alex, 23. They're getting closer, guys. They're getting closer. She's, she's found her, her niche, I think. Be interesting to see her knock sideways, see how she reacted that way. Presiding officer, a healthy 18. I think he's probably the guy that should be doing it every week. Yeah, I think he's probably right. Yeah, I think so. There's a woman does it occasionally as well, sits in it, but uh, yeah. she doesn't kind of come across. No, he, he's here at the moment. He seems to have the authority. Yeah. Well, that's it for this week, folks. Thank you for your attention, and we'll see you next week.